Glory, glory, glory. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. We're going to wait a second for our Facebook family to get on. Spirit, you're welcome. Yes. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are y'all doing today? <clears throat> good morning and welcome to Solution Church School of Equipping. School of Equipping. School of Equipping. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. We're excited for what God is going to do in your life, what he has already authored in you so that he can push it through you so that the world can see that the Lord is good and that heaven can come to earth through you. We want to welcome you here again for those who are coming late. We want to wait a little while for some others to wake up and get on. And we're just uh, moving forward in the things of God. I've always said you have to take the steps and do the reps. There are no shortcuts in the life that God have aligned for you and the steps that he's ordered out for you. There are no shortcuts, but the Holy Spirit is the cheat code. The Holy Spirit is the code breaker. Holy Spirit is the one who leads you in all truth, and he'll show you which way to go and what things to do and what things to say. Um, even the, Jesus told the disciples, take no thought of what you should say. For when you need those words, they'll come right up to you. I just want to exhort you today as being highly favored of the Lord. We're going to get into the word of God today, and it's going to be a great, great word that's going to feed you and equip you for where you need to go and not just for where you're at. Amen. We're not talking about a fast food type scenario, but what we're talking about is you being fed by Holy Spirit, by the, by the unction of Holy Spirit. You're being fed and empowered to go out and do um, and, and to exceed the expectations even of what you have for yourself because eyes have not seen and ears have not heard nor have entered into the hearts of men the things that God has for you. I want to thank God for all of those who support us online, who support us financially, who support us in every way um, through prayers because they're, all of it is important. So when we want to lift up those and want to thank them for their support. We want to thank them for being faithful. Amen. Um, okay, we're going to get into the word. You know how we do it. You know how we do it. We're going to get on this prayer request list and we're going to invite Holy Spirit in and build an environment and a culture that will provoke heaven to move on your behalf. I believe that your prayers are going to be answered today. Even while I have this prayer list out, I need you to get your prayer list out. Get a prayer request in your heart. If you're on Facebook put that prayer, prayer request up. If you're on YouTube, put that prayer request up. 
We're going to begin to see God move on your behalf. And I want to see testimonies. I want you to post those testimonies of what God has already done in your life, the things that's happening um, in your life. Post it because we want to get we, we want to become so tight knit group. Like when you hurt, I hurt. When you're going through something, I'm going through something. That's the body of Christ. That's the body of believers. And so we want to thank you today. We want to thank you for joining us. We want to thank you for joining us. We want to thank you for joining us. Amen. So let's get right into it. I know those on YouTube, you can't see it, but I have a, 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 a card up and it says, Welcome Holy Spirit. And after it says, Welcome Holy Spirit, if you're on Facebook, you see it. But the prayer requests, the prayer requests, the prayer requests. And the first prayer request is family. Like we want to lift up family right now. We want, we want to pray for families. Families have been under attack. Families have been under attack. And there is no way of sidestepping this or, or getting by this except to say that we need to pray. We need to pray and lift up families. So, Father, we thank you today. We thank you for families, oh, Father, that you have ordained that you have established, that you have created, oh, Father. We thank you that we let no man bring us under what God has brought together. We thank you for tight-knit families. We thank you for tight-knit bonds, oh, Father. We evict out of houses, out of households, oh, Lord. Division, separation, bitterness, strife. We evict out of households discord, disagreement, disunity. And we pray love, oh Father, that you replace those attributes of an unhealthy environment with the attribute of love in a healthy home environment, Lord. We lift it up before you this day, oh Lord. We pray where there's discrepancies amongst fathers and sons, Father, that you will remove it in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will bring in the love, oh Father, that surpasses all understanding, oh Lord. Where there's discrepancies, oh Father, and disagreements, oh Lord, between siblings, oh Father, that you will come in and bring peace into that environment, that you will give the mother, that you will give the father words, oh Father, to speak, oh Father, that will bring peace to that environment, oh Father, that will bring wholeness to that environment, that they might be in a place, oh Father, uh, an environment where they can grow and where they can thrive, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we know that environment makes results predictable, oh Lord. So we speak to the environment of families, the, the family environment, oh Father, the family culture, oh Lord. And we lift it up before you this day, oh Lord, that it might be an environment of heaven, an environment, oh Father, where questions can be asked and answers can be released, where there is no animosity, but where there is peace, where there is no selfishness, but there is selflessness, Father, we pray and lift up families today, oh Lord. We pray peace in homes right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we pray this day that forgiveness will arise in those areas, oh Lord. Forgiveness will arise in homes, oh Father. Forgiveness will arise, oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray and lift up that wayward son or that wayward daughter within that family, oh Father. That's wreaking havoc on the family structure, oh Lord. We declare and decree peace right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that there is no weapon formed against them that shall prosper, oh Lord. But that the word of God have already reached them and is already prospering, oh Lord. That the word of God has already gotten there, O oh Lord, that it have already taken root, O oh Lord, and that the fruit of the word of God, O oh Lord, is a sure thing that it, your word is impossible for it to turn void, O oh Lord, return void, Lord. So we thank you. Heavenly Father, we lift them up before you this day that the steps of families are ordered by the Lord, that, that the intent of, of marriage was to bring about godly families, O oh Lord. So we thank you, O oh Lord, for holy matrimony, O oh Lord, that you have prescribed upon the earth, O oh Lord, to bring about godly holy and righteous families, O oh Lord. We lift them up before you this day, that they will cover the earth, O oh Lord, that they will beat back darkness, O oh Lord, just by their very existence, O oh Lord, by families standing together and standing in unity, O oh Lord, standing in one accord, O oh Lord, refusing, O oh Lord, to take an offense, refusing, O oh Father, to accept disagreements as, as deal breakers, O oh Lord, for families, O oh Lord, to love one another, O oh Lord. We pray for extended families, O oh Lord, that the phone will be picked up, O oh Father, that communication will be made, O oh Father, that families will communicate like never before, O oh Lord, will communicate like never before, O oh Lord, on the, on the telephone, O oh Father. They will take weekend trips, O oh Father, just to sit with family and love on family, O oh Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the expectation of miracle signs and wonders happening in families, O oh Lord. We give you all praise and glory 
for families and the family structure that you have designed and that you have ordained, oh Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name, Lord. Families are so important. Families are so important. So we thank God for families. Now we're going to lift up the Highland Park families, those families in Highland Park that have suffered loss, that have suffered loss, that whole entire, entire Highland Park community. Father, we lift them up before you this day in the name of Jesus. Some of them are awakened this day, minus a family member, minus a loved one, minus, let me, Father, the, the, the child or the son or the daughter or the mother or the father or the grandmother or the grandfather that they had a week ago. Father, we lift them up before you this day. We lift them up before you this day in their time of bereavement, O oh Father, in their time of hurt, O oh Father, in their time of sackcloth and ashes, in their time, O oh Father, of trying to make sense out of something that will never make sense, O oh Lord. We pray that the Holy Spirit, Comforter, come and see about them, will come and rest peace, of the peace of God will rest upon them, O oh Lord, that their minds will be at peace, O oh Lord. Their minds will be at peace, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh Lord, for those pastors who are having to... Um, commit those bodies to the ground by ashes to ashes and dust to dust. We lift them up before you this day, O oh Lord, that you will give them the words to say, the words to speak, O oh Father, that as they, they counsel those families, O oh Father, that you will give them divine understanding, O oh Father, to speak and to break yokes and to destroy the works of the enemy, O oh Father, for we know and understand that all things work together for the good of the, those that love the Lord have been called according to his purpose. And even though through this situation and others, O oh Lord, we don't know, we can't see with our natural eyes how all things work together, O oh Father, but we stand in faith, believe in God, understanding and knowing, Father, that this is a faith walk. So we lift them up before you in faith, O oh Lord, extending, O oh Father, the faith, the branch of faith to them, O oh Lord, extending, O oh Lord, the rod of authority to them, O oh Father, to come forth. We're bidding them to come, O oh Father, to you, O oh Lord. We're bidding them to come to you, O oh Father, to turn to you, O oh Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We pull down bitterness, O oh Father. We pull down the, 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 the finger of blame, O oh Father, for some are blaming themselves for this. They're blaming themselves. They're blaming others for this. They're blaming Police, they're blaming other people for all of that have happened, oh, Father. But we pull down this spirit of blame, this spirit of shame, this spirit of neglect, and we lift up, Heavenly Father, vic victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Even those that try to politicize and religiousize the things that are happening, oh, Father, we pull the lies down in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit comforting this family, oh, Father. Loving on them, O oh Father, embracing them, O oh Father, and doing them with power, and doing them with truth, and doing them, O oh Father, with understanding, O oh Father. We thank you for that family, O oh Lord. We lift them up. We lift up the young man, O oh Father, the two-year-old child who was left, O oh Father, both of his parents taking away from him, O oh Lord. We lift them up before you this day, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh Father, we pray, O oh Father, for that young man that you will cover him, O oh Lord, that he has been chosen, O oh Father that he has been chosen by this event, oh, Father, to be a world shaker, a world changer, Lord, that he's been chosen because of this event, that we stand with him. He hadn't lost, he hadn't lost a mother and a father, but he have gained a million mothers and a million fathers, oh, Lord, for it's all of our duty, oh, Father, to in one way or another pray and lift this young man up, pray and cover him, oh, Father, pray and, and, and reach out, oh, Father, in whatever way you've given us, oh, Lord, that, that we can extend ourselves and pray, oh, Father, and meditation, oh, Father, on the things, on the needs that he may have, oh, Lord, that it might bring about a change in his life, oh, Lord. We thank you, oh, Lord, if, if there are the psychological effects, oh, Father, we pray that you will cover him in all his ways. We cover him, O oh Father, that he will not suffer any psychological damage, that he will not suffer any damages, O oh Lord, from this event, O oh Father, but it is hard that his mind, O oh Father, might be stayed on you throughout this situation, O oh Lord, even as he grows, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, the family members, O oh Father, that have taken him in, O oh Father, we pray, O oh Father, and lift them up. We cover them, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. That, I, Father, it will be as if He'd been through the fire, but you can't smell the smoke. The faith walk, O oh Father, is born on the inside of this young man, O oh Father. 
that years from now we will see, O oh Father, the glory of God revealed through this situation upon his life, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you today, Father. We bless your name. We magnify your name for this young man in the name of Jesus Christ. That's powerful. We want to we want to continue to lift up this young man. We want to continue to lift up the families. Um, we want to continue to lift up that city, that community, that 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 mayor, all of those citizens. We want to lift them up. This is a life changing event, not just for those who it impacted directly, but indirectly for a community to go through this. Oh my God. We want to keep them up, lifted up in prayer. We want to keep them lifted up and encouraged. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm. And now we're going to go into healing. But before we get into healing, I have forgiveness. And, and I had healing at the top of the list first. But the Lord said, no. Mm -mm. Because a lot of people's healing is held up for lack of forgiveness. That just did something for somebody. A lot of us suffer different aches, different pains, the attack of infirmities on our bodies that we don't have to go through when we just release and forgive. So, Father, I pray forgiveness. I pray for you, for the forgiveness of the Lord, O oh Father. For the word of God to prevail in the lives of your people, O oh Lord. That you said, O oh Father, in the measure that we forgive, in that same measure it shall be measured back to us, O oh Father. We, 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 we go through a session of forgiveness right now in the name of Jesus. This is a forgiveness session. We're forgiving. We're walking in forgiving, O oh Father. I want you to get on your mind, that person, that place, that thing that you have held on to, that you have not yet released it. We decree and declare a divine release. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, a release, a release, a release. That's going to bring about a shift. That's going to bring about a change, a release of forgiveness. You got to forgive them. You got to forgive your mama. You got to forgive your father. You got to forgive them. You can't keep holding on and fighting that war if they wasn't there. They wasn't there my whole life. They didn't come to my graduation. They didn't show up at my game. They wasn't here. They Nope, release it. Let it go. Let it go. Release it and let it go. Release it and let it go. Release it and let it go. Glory to God. You got to release it. You got to let it go. You got to walk in righteousness. You got to walk in holiness. You got to walk in truth. You got to walk in health. And you have so many bags of unforgiveness that you can't, you can't carry the bag of health. Health is wealth. A wealthy man is a healthy man. And I'm not talking about in, 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 in finances, but when you have, because 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 a, a sick sickness can eat up and destroy and run through finances. All the money in the world can bring healing. Microsoft, Apple. These men got all the money in the world. But it can't buy them hell. That comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. And he graced us with health. He graced us with bodies that heal itself. You get a cut, your body self heals. So I don't have any better sense than to believe that anything that goes on, my body has the ability to self heal itself. That our bodies have the ability if something attacks your blood, attacks your, your, your a virus, attacks your body, your body has the ability to create cells to fight against it, to create fighter cells that will fight against whatever is fighting against you. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Glory to God. So we thank you. We thank you, Father. That's how the word is. 
The word is, is going forth on your behalf and it's fight, fighting against whatever's fighting against you. So, Father, we thank you for healing. We thank you for healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, that lives are changed, that healing is springing forth, that minds are changed, O Lord, that hearts are changed, O Lord, that healing is springing forth in the hearts and minds of your people, that they're being brought into a place of holiness, that they're being brought into a place of righteousness, that they're being brought into a place of truth by way of forgiveness so that healing can spring forth. Release and receive. If you need a healing in your body, I need you to exhale. Release. And then I need you to receive. Take that next breath. Exhale. And inhale. Healing. Inhale. Wealth. Exhale down. Come on. We have to go through. We have to take ourselves through sessions of forgiveness. Of releasing. When you release, and don't you feel lighter? Don't you feel better? Don't you feel like you're better equipped to be the vessel that God have called you to be? To love with a love that surpasses all understanding. With a love that, that transcends anything the earth has ever seen. Glory to God. We thank you, Father. We bless your name today. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited for what God is going to do. Glory to God. We're going to lift up being faithful. Being faithful. That's another one. Being faithful. Father, we just pray for being faithful. We just ask that you will equip us and give us the tools that we need to continue to be faithful concerning the things of God, to be faithful in what you've given our hands to do. Give us the strength. Give us the strategy. Give us the understanding on how to execute the plans that you have placed in our hands, the plans that you have given us to execute and to manage. And that when we bring those plans back to you, we bring them back in the form of fruit, Lord. You said that you've given us gifts and you've called upon us, O oh Lord, to multiply those gifts, to do something with the things that you have put in our hands, the things that you have put in our lives. Let us be faithful over those things. Let us be faithful over relationships that you have connected us with, divine connections and relationships, O oh Lord. Let us steward over them well, Father. Hallelujah. Let us steward over them well, Lord Jesus. We thank you today. Thank you today, Father. We come against every attack of the enemy to try and extinguish the anointing off of your life, to try and extinguish the anointing, the God likeness that you have. The enemy is angry with you because you have a God likeness. He made you in his likeness and his image. The external is an image, but the internal is the likeness. You're like God. He made you in his likeness. Father, we, we refute the lie of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We set our hearts, we set our minds to walk in faithfulness. We set our hearts, we set our minds to walk in truth. We refuse to take shortcuts. We refuse to take back doors and sideways. We, we refuse to take the easy way out. But only the way that you have made is the easy way. The illusion of an easy way, you always have to come back and do it again. But the devil is a liar. You're going to stand up and be faithful in all that God have called you to do. You're going to stand up and be faithful. Ain't no hookup, man, with a hookup. There is no hookup. We walk in faithfulness. Jesus Christ is the hookup. You hooked up with the hooker upper who hooks us up with Holy Ghost. You have Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you into all truth. This week is going to be the best week of your life. This week is going to be a life of change, a life of transformation, a life of duplication, where you're going to begin to duplicate yourself and other people. You're going to see other people. They're going to want to be, be mentored by you so that you can pour into them truth, understanding and knowledge of the word of God. The gifts and talents that God have given you, God have equipped you for a time such as this, such as this. He have equipped you with those gifts so that you can use and leverage those gifts to minister to other people because the gift makes room for the giver. You posture your heart and you set your mind to be a giver this day. Giving of time, talent, and associations. And you watch what God do in your life. You watch the changes that take place in your life when you posture yourself and fix your heart to be a giver. A sower into the lives of other people. Whatever God has given you, you sow it into somebody else's life. Whatever God has placed in your hands, 
I'm talking about the supernatural giftings that God have given you, used and stored over there. That gift was not given for you. You got to sow that gift for it to be multiplied. You got to put it in the ground for something to come back. What did God say about the man that, that had the, 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 the gift and, and didn't do anything with it? God took it from him and gave it to somebody else and cursed him out of darkness. Cursed him to the pit of darkness. No, we're gonna do, you're going to do something with the gifts that God has given you this day. You're not going to continue to sit on those gifts. Yes, you do have more to give. Yes, you do have more to offer. No longer are you going to sit in the back seat. No longer are you going to sit in the back of the class and be silent. But God is pulling you forth right now. You are a bright light shining. But you're too far away for us to see. When you look up in the sky and you see stars shining bright, some are dim dimmer than others. The ones that are dimmer are only dimmer because they're farther away. But when you bring that star up, oh my goodness, you begin to see the glory of God revealed in that star. God is bringing some of you from the back of the class to the front of the class. God is bringing some of you from the back of the room to the front of the room. God is bringing you from a place of being in the cave of Adullam. Prophets, come out of the cave of Adullam. Come out of that cave where you think you're the only one. Glory to God. But there are more. There are more with you than against you. Stand up in the sphere that God has given you and reign and rule. And have dominion in that place. Be secure in the fact that you, you don't have the ability to fulfill what God have, have called you to do. You rely on Holy Spirit. You are bankrupt in your ability to do what God has placed you on this earth to do within self. Self has to be on a cross so that Christ's life can arise in you today. So that you can be faithful in what God has called you to do. Faithful in what God has put your hands to do. God has placed you in a position to be awesome. God has placed you in a position to be preeminent. God has placed you in a position to be an anomaly in the earth. Where they say, what manner of man is this? What manner of woman is this? God has placed you in the earth for such a time as this. To overthrow the demonic edicts and lies of the enemy by your actions, by your thought life, by your walk life. We don't have to partake of the things that the world partake of. We don't have to partake of a culture that's going astray, of a culture that's running away from God, not running to God. We don't have to partake of the spirit of this age and the fruit thereof. We don't have to sit at Jezebel's table and eat of her meat. But we abstain like the three Hebrew boys, like, 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 like Daniel. We abstain from the king's table and from the king's meat. Just give us a little vegetables. For our, 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 our diet has been prescribed by God. Our diet has been prescribed by heaven. Are you on heaven's diet? Are you on the diet of Jezebel? Are you on the diet of the culture of this world? I'm talking about a spiritual diet. What are you eating? You can't produce what God has placed in you because you don't have the nutrients available. The nutrients are not available for you to synthesize that, that truth in order to produce. But you're going to get it today. You're going to be equipped today by the power of God, by the word of God to produce what God has placed on the inside of you. You've gotten to a place where you where you believe that you're. You, you, you can step out where you can step into the things of God, where you can step into the reality of the kingdom of God and produce what God is calling you to do. But but there's been a hiccup. There's been a hang up in your in your in your walk, in your ability to be faithful and what God will place your hands to do. But I release you now to walk in wholeness. I release you now to walk in destiny. I release you now to walk in purpose. I release you now to walk in faithfulness. You are faithful. Your life is meaningful. You are a change agent to bring about change in the hearts and minds of people. You are a change agent to bring heaven to earth. Heaven to earth has to come through you. Heaven to earth has to come through you. You're the vessel. You're the one that God is waiting on. You're the one that God is looking at. You are the apple of God's eye. God has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light this day. God has called you out of and called you into righteousness. God has called you out of out of and called you to walk in truth. God has called you out of lying and cheating and stealing and called you to walk in truth. God has called us, the Bible says, in totality out of darkness and to walk in light. Light represents truth. Light represents life. God said those whose deeds are evil hate light because if they step in the light, their deeds will be seen. Do we really want light? Yes, we do. 
See, when you you really want light, you really want God to arise in your life. You really want Holy Spirit to come and shine light on everything that's not like him within you so that you can repent and turn from it. Your prayer should be, Holy Spirit, show me me. Don't show me Sally. Don't show me Sue. Holy Spirit, show me me. Reveal me to me. Reveal me to me so that my life can be changed and transformed so that I can be a, 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 a light on a hill that can't be hid. So that I can be the salt and light that brings about change in the hearts and minds of people. That brings about change from the inside out. That I'm growing and stewarding over those changes, over those relationships, that there might be a change on the inside. No longer shall we breathe God's air and not be accountable to why we're breathing his air. Life can deal you a hand, it can deal you a deck, it can deal you a situation, it can deal you a circumstance that will cause you to forget that God is the one who can do miracles. He's the God of miracles. And like last week, I see some of you at that place where Pharaoh is chasing you, he's behind you, and the river, the Red Sea is in front of you. And you don't know which way to turn. And God is, is, is giving you instruction. You're waiting for something to happen, but get in a still place. Get in a quiet place and listen. Moses had to be in a place where he can hear God say, stretch forth thy rod. And when Moses stretched forth that rod, you know what happened? The Red Sea's parted. Water was on one side. Water was on the other side. And they went through on dry ground. Your miracle is right before you. The greatest obstacle that you're facing is an opportunity for God to show out. It's an opportunity for you to trust God. It's an opportunity for you to tell flesh to be quiet. But it's in these opportunities where, where, where circumstances arise, your flesh begins to want to act up. Your flesh begins to want to rule. When you get in situations, be still. And know that he is God. It's in being still that you can hear God. Paramedics, firemen, policemen will tell you, when a situation happens, it's the man that stays calm. When emergency situations happen, it's the person that stays calm and thinks. He can hear the Holy Ghost. Anxiousness, anger is the wind that blows out the light to the mind. You'll begin to move out on emotion and not on wisdom. You'll begin to, to, to react and not respond. We got a bunch of reactors out here. Come on. We'll react to a situation, but it's rooted. Our reaction is rooted in emotion. But when you respond, that response is rooted in instruction. You've been instructed on how to respond. You saw the situation happening. You saw it coming a mile away and you stood flat footed and you waited for the situation to happen. And when that situation arose, when that circumstance arises in your life, you'll sit and, and, and say, be still and know that I'm God. Be still. You hear the voice of God saying, be still and know that I am God. Step to the left, daughter. Step to the right, daughter. Move up, daughter. Move down, daughter. No, don't sit in this seat. Sit in that seat. Have you ever been in a situation where that has happened in your life? Where that have literally happened in your life? Where you were in a situation, something, you felt like there was something telling you, no, don't sit there. Sit here. And because you obeyed that voice that you heard, your life was spared. Or something drastically in your life. There are, there are thousands of people, hundreds of people. On, on the day of 9-11, when the 9-11 event happened, they say they heard something told them, don't go today. Something told them, no, don't, don't, don't go to work today. And they heard the voice and they listened to the voice. And they, were, they weren't emotionally tied to their job in a way. Well, I got to be there. And I, but they heard the voice. Say, no, don't go today. And others, they say they went 
and and went to the work and the and the and the weight of of that voice was on them so heavy that they left before all the stuff took place glory to god hallelujah we thank you for the instruction of the lord happening in your life this day we thank you for the in, intuition of god happening in your life this day so i want to thank you today what a powerful word that god wants to give us today i want to tell you right now the author's copy the author's copy we're going to be coming out. I'm going to give you time to get your Bibles. Get your Bibles out. Amen. Get your Bibles out. Get your Bibles out. We're going to get into the word. We're going to get into this word. Oh, my God. We thank you, Father. We bless your name, Father. We magnify your name, Lord. I tell you, the heavy lifting of a walk, the heavy lifting of our walk is prayer. And very few people like to go into prayer. Very few people like to pray. But prayer is what's going to change things. Prayer is what's going to bring about a change. Prayer is what's going to transform. Prayer is what's going to what's going to rule and reign in the secret places, in the high places. I encourage somebody to take up reigns, take up a posture in the high places. The high place of prayer, the high place of prayer and communing with God. Take up residence in the high place. Refuse to come to the low places. The author's copy. Get your Bibles and turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. We're going we're gonna to sit at, at, at Hebrews chapter 12. And while you're getting your Bibles, turn to Hebrews chapter 12. We just want to. Again, say we are, I want to remind you, we have been created to reveal the wonder of a heavenly father on earth. The glory, we're glory revealers. We're glory containers. We were only built and designed to reveal the glory of God. We were built and designed to reveal the glory of God. We are spirit beings living in an earth suit, living in a flesh body. We were designed as glory carriers, as dominion executors. We execute the dominion of heaven on earth. Heaven wants to come to earth through you. Heaven has been waiting to come to earth through you. Heaven is, 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 heaven is speaking and saying, I have no other way to get to the earth except through you. And that's why the enemy fights so hard. He wants hell to come through earth through you. What's done in hell, he wants to bring it on earth. Suffering and, and, and injuries and, and sickness and disease and torment and pain and shame and the devil is alive. We pull it down in the name of Jesus. No longer will you be a conduit to bring hell to earth, but you are a vessel that's going to bring heaven to earth. That's become, that's become the norm. The devil is a liar. You better change your environment. Where you see hell coming to earth as being the norm, you want to extinguish that. The devil is a liar. You got to go and take territory. That means that territory needs to be taken back for the kingdom of God. You know a community where there's violence? See, see, when you see violence running rampant, you gotta, we got to pray. We got to take up residence in the high places to extinguish. Because things happen in the spirit before they happen in the, in, in the natural. They happen in the spirit first. When somebody speaks a word, you are discouraged in your spirit first before we see it manifest in your natural being. And that's by a word because the power of life and death is in the tongue. So what we see happening all, all around the world, it's happening. Why? Because we have to occupy the high places. We have to occupy the high places of holiness, of righteousness, of dedicating ourselves to spending time with God in prayer. We don't take that lightly. We champion the cause of prayer. We champion the cause of communicating with God. We champion 
the cause of communing with God, dialoguing with God. We pray a lot, say a lot, but do you listen? Make sure you have a notepad. When you're praying, make sure you have a notepad so that you can hear what the Lord is saying and write it down. Get quiet. Because if prayer is dialogue and I'm doing all the talking, I need to be quiet so that I can hear what God is saying. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is amazing. He'll lead you into all truth. He'll reveal to you the things that are hidden to others. He'll give you the answers that others have been waiting for their lifetime. You're the missing piece to the puzzle in somebody else's life. Have you had a puzzle? Have you ever had a puzzle and, and you worked on that puzzle and you got it done and there was one missing piece? You looked under the table, over the table, in the garbage can, in the back. You looked all over. You tore up your whole house looking for that puzzle piece. You looked everywhere for that puzzle piece, couldn't find it. And you spent that whole, all that work on that puzzle and it's sitting there without that puzzle piece. And then four or five weeks later, you have come over to the house and, and, your little, and your little nephew or your little niece walk up to you and say, look what I found. God put the wisdom in, in, in them. And you say, where did they find it? And they point right there at a rug or something and say, right there. Like, man, I looked all over this house. I couldn't see it. I'm saying all that to tell you that your missing puzzle piece is right in front of you. You can't see it. The missing piece that solves the equation in your life is right in front of you and you can't see it. And that's not by mistake. That's by design. Because it's going to take relationship. You don't have the other piece. Somebody else is going to come into your life and say, here it is. You're going to say it's been there all the time. God is a God of relationship. Ain't no long, there are no long rangers and long wolves. There are no long rangers and long wolves. God is a God of relationship. And I know sometimes you 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 have to run races where, where where when there's lacking in understanding and people draw back from you, you have to be willing to accept that. And when people get most people move based on on, on their measure of understanding, but faith moves knowing that understanding comes in in the steps that they take, not in the steps that they don't take. Your missing piece, the missing piece of the puzzle, sitting right there before you. The missing piece is right in front of you, but it's going to take somebody else coming over. You inviting them into your world. And they're going to say, here's, the, here's, the, here's what you were looking for. Now, there's two, there's two sides to this story because not only are you required to invite other people in as relational pieces, Relational people who, who, who become missing pieces in your life, but you got to remove those that don't fit. Some of us, we, 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 we're, we're the ones, we're at, at a table and we're creating and, and finishing up our puzzle and we got two pieces left and we're trying to force a piece to fit in a place where it don't fit. Some of us got people in our life, we're trying to force them to fit. They don't fit. They're not the one. It's the other piece. And you neglected the other piece. You, you are going to fix your heart and your mind. I know it's not that piece. Yes, it is. The very thing that you've neglected in your life. You, you forced out of your life. You forced out of the posture of blessing. They were, they're in a position to be a blessing to you. And you couldn't see it. And that's also... Not by mistake, but by design. The enemy will try and mess up your relationship with someone or mess up a situation where you don't think the one piece, puzzle piece that really fits 
is the one that fits. So you, you're content with trying to force something to fit that don't fit. That day is over. Hallelujah. That day is over for you. Stop trying to make stuff fit that don't fit. That puzzle piece don't go there. It doesn't go there. It was never designed or cut to fit in that position. And no matter how much you try to make it fit, it will always corrupt the other pieces of the, of the puzzle. Ain't that something? Certain people add to your life, they corrupt everything else around you. Because you've added that piece to your life. Just think, if you try and force a puzzle piece that don't fit into a puzzle, it's, it, when you force it in there, all the, it messes up the other, but then you start trying to fix the other pieces. And God is leading, Holy Spirit, isn't that amazing? Holy Spirit leads us down this road of talking about a puzzle and the pieces that fit, the three dimensions of a puzzle. You got the pieces that you lost, and somebody else has to come into your life and show you that it was there all the time. Then you got the pieces that you try to impose on that puzzle and make it fit in your life, the puzzle of life, and it don't fit. And then you have the puzzle piece itself. You got to put yourself in that position too. You got to put yourself in position of the person who lost, lost the piece in the position of the person who's trying to force the piece. And then you got to put yourself in the position of the puzzle piece itself. Sometimes you're the missing piece to somebody else's life. You're that puzzle piece that that little kid going to pick up and say, here it is. And they're going to say, where you found that person? Oh, they were there all the time. You just didn't see them. There's somebody in your blind spot. Mm. Come on. There's somebody in your blind spot. There's somebody in your blind spot. There's somebody in your blind spot. You can't see them. But this is the day. This is the day that your blind spot. It's going to be revealed that God is going to reveal to you. The people in your blind spot. The blind spot, the blind spot. Wow. There's a blind spot. You can't see them. They can't see you. You're in their blind spot. You're that puzzle piece that's been hidden, but been there all the time. And if you felt thrown away, you felt like, man, I can't believe they don't see me. You, you felt like I don't, <clears throat> even people on your job, you're the missing puzzle piece. You're the solution to the issues that are happening on your job, but they can't see you yet. God sometimes will hide you on purpose. God hid Moses in plain sight. He hid Moses in plain sight. The deliverer of the Israelites was hidden in plain sight. While the other kids that hid in traditional ways were, were slain. But God gave instruction to Moses' mother, cast him on the water. Put him in a basket and put him on the water. And he got to, to, to the Pharaoh's wife and Pharaoh's wife and daughter saw him and they took care of him. And then they hired Moses' mom to be the, the caretaker of Moses. And they took him in as a son. Oh, my God. God is talking to you today. That he's hidden you in plain sight. And I know, and it seems like you being cast on the water, like you don't understand what direction, and, 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 and there's somebody who's a door holder in your life. You're the one, you're the solution, and you can't, and you can't make it happen. You gotta let it happen. The Bible says this, it says, let God be true in every man alive. And in saying that, you have to let it happen. You can't make things happen quick enough. You got to let them happen. And as you let them happen in your life, you're going to begin to see transformation. You're going to begin to see change. You're going to begin to see the things of God happening in your life like never before. Like never before. Mm. Thank you, Father. We just bless your name today. We magnify your name today. 
We glorify your name today. You're awesome, Father. We thank you. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God. I, 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 I feel this power. I feel this power today. Somebody, somebody's drawing on the Lord today. Somebody's drawing on the Lord. That, that puzzle description was for somebody to understand that you are the missing puzzle piece. And the three sides of that story, if you are in, in earshot of what I'm saying, then you fit in one of those areas. The instruction of the Lord, be still and know that he's God. Be still and know that he's God. Your time is coming. The, 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 the results are already coming in. The race has already been called. It's already been called. You, you're waiting on somebody to, to say, and the winner is, but God have already said that. He's already declared you the winner. He's already declared you the winner. Think about that. God have already declared you the winner. And I know I said turn to Hebrews chapter 12 and we're going to get there. But let me tell you something. This God has a way of doing things. God has a way of steering and guiding and leading. And when we surrender to Holy Spirit, when we surrender to the move of God, to the to the to the will of the father. It becomes like a river flowing. Glory to God. Glory to God. We just yield to the Holy Spirit and he leads and guides us into all truth. He leads and guides us. Well, turn your Bibles. Turn your Bibles, turn your Bibles, turn your Bibles. To Hebrews chapter 12. Now, we're going to talk about the author's copy. We're going to talk about the author's copy. Got to loosen up this bow tie a little bit. Mm. The author's copy, the author's copy. When we start talking about the author's copy, what do you think about? Cuz cuz we're going to we're going to have a conversation about the author's copy. Holy Spirit, we just thank you going before us with us and after us and giving us everything that we need in order to produce the, your res desired result, O oh Father. We refuse to be and refuse to author anything, O oh Father, where we relinquish the all rights unto you, O oh Lord. We surrender to you this day. We surrender to you this day. This day we surrender to you. You're the guide, you're the lead. You're the one that was sent to lead us into all truth. And we accept your guidance and your leading of moving us forth, of pushing us forth. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Well, let's get into it. Hebrews. Let's get to Hebrews. Hebrews coffee. That's my little corny joke for today. And when we talk about Hebrews, Hebrews is, is a, such a phenomenal book. A lot of people like this book just because of it's a book of faith. You know, it, it, it's, it's the hall of faith, hall of fame of faith where the, where the author begin to describe the faith walk and what faith had produced in the lives of the people, what faith had produced in the lives of, of those who have went before us. By faith, the mouths of lions were closed. By faith, Peter walked on water. By faith, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him as righteousness. By faith, kingdoms were subdued by faith, 
Oh, hallelujah. Do you have faith today? Do you have equity and faith? Do you have faith today? Remember, we talked about the word of God. We talked about how powerful the word of God is. Do I need to give you a reminder of what the, when we talk about the word of God, what we're talking about? Do I need to give you a reminder when we're speaking of the word of God that we're speaking of something that's sharper than any double-edged sword? It's impossible for God to lie. And that reminded me, we got to go back to it. Real significant last prayer request. That last prayer request. That last prayer request is the God that cannot lie. Oh my goodness. The God that cannot lie. The God that cannot lie, y'all. The God that cannot lie, he can't lie. It's impossible for him to lie. It's, it, it, it's not even, there's no way when he speaks something, it is. There is no way for him to lie. He is the highest of the highest that we call him the most high. The most high God is impossible for him to lie. The God that cannot lie. So I encourage you. If you're holding on to any word that God has spoken to you, if you're holding on to a promise that God has spoken to you, that God has imposed upon your heart, that God has shown you the dreams, the goals, the things that God has given you, his word won't lie. His word will never return void. Whatever God said, you just set your clock and you just wait on it. You just wait on God. The Bible says, though, that wait upon the Lord, that he will renew their strength that they'll mount up on wings of eagles, that they'll run and not get weary, that they'll walk and not faint. If you're waiting on God, you, you're in a good place. You're in a good place. If you're waiting on God, you've embraced the process. Part of waiting is embracing the process of waiting. Waiting is a process. Where you're going, you're going through a process. You're going through processes that's shaping you, that's forming you, that's making you. So that when that due season come where you mount up on wings of eagles, where you run and not be weary and walk and not faint, you're in shape to run the race that God have called you to run. Now you're able to run. You're waiting on God. You're waiting on God. Don't rush it. Stay in the stable and, 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 and train. Stay in the stable and, and, and be developed. Embrace the process. And don't don't jump up out of the process because you're sick and tired of waiting. Stay in the process. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. If God said it, surely it will come to pass. If God said it, surely it will come to pass. Man, I'm 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 ready to jump up out of my seat. Because there's some words that I've received. There's some words and things that God have spoken. See, and this, this is the thing. The father of lies, the enemy, let a decree happen. Let a false word be go forth. You'll receive it. But when we start talking about truth, when we start talking about God and what God wants to do, why is it hard for people to receive the truth that God is speaking? Why is it hard for us to receive something that God is speaking, something that God is decreeing, something that God is declaring? When the enemy says some people receive it with no problem, in faith, from a liar, we look at the news, all these lies that are spread around the news, we'll take what they say as at face value. But this Bible, this word that never changes, we have we, we waver in, 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 in believing what God has said. But God cannot lie. Oh, God can't lie. News media lying left and right. The prince of the power of the air is loosing false narratives that bring division between people, bring division between families, bring division between because of cultural differences and all these other different things. And loose the spirit of religion on the earth, loose the spirit of, 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 of politics on the earth, and we carry those wolves into the church as pets. And we pet those wolves. And this my pet wolf over here. And then the other person have their pet wolf. Well, this my pet wolf over here. And, and my party better than yours. All of us evil. We're talking about God that cannot lie. 
We're talking about a God is impossible for him to lie, but we're going to believe everything else except the Bible. We're going to believe everything else and question the Bible. Isn't that? And, and this is the only valid book historically that everything in it, it said what happened, has happened on earth. But we question it. Prophetically speaking, everything that, that this book, and I find myself having to speak and defend the word to Christians. Having to remind you what this word is. And you, you heard me when we went into Revelation chapter 12 and we begin to see what the word of God really is. That the word of God has never lost a fight that the word of God is fighting your battles, that the word of God runs to pick fights in righteousness and in truth. Everything that's contending against, that's trying to contend against the word of God, the word of God opposes it. And not only opposes it, the word of God is going to fight on your behalf. God sent his word and healed the land. God sent his word. The Bible says in John chapter one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through the word, all things were made without the word. Nothing was made that has been made in the word was life. And that life was the light of men and that light shined in darkness, but darkness could not perceive it. There came a man sent by God whose name was John. He himself was not that light but came to bear witness of that light. What light? The true light, the light of all men, cometh into the world. And that was Jesus Christ that lighteth all men. Jesus Christ came wrapped in flesh as the word in totality. So I'm here to tell you that our last prayer request, God cannot lie. He can't lie. He cannot lie. So let's get into Hebrews chapter 12. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm going to read this. We were talking about the faith that happens throughout Hebrews. We're going to read this. And I was just putting this, this book into contrast. You, you talk about Jesus being the example. Chapter uh, 12 starts off with talking about from chapter 12, 1 through 3, it's talking about Jesus Christ being the example. Jesus Christ being the example. And I want to use this scriptural reference to point out some distinctions in our lives that we must face and that we must counteract if we're going to be who God have called us to be in the earth. Amen. All right. Verse one. Therefore, since we have so great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every weight of sin which so easily besets us or entangles us. The Bible is telling us we got a cloud of witnesses surrounding us. Heaven is all looking down upon us. I remember God gave me an open vision of heaven. And the reason my mind can, can perceive it is because in my vision, that's what it seems like I was looking at. I, and I saw my aunt, my aunt Pat, she was waving. She was looking at me and waving and smiling. And the whole, it was like a sea of people around her and they were all celebrating, but she was waving and smiling and just saying, hey, and I'm looking like, what am I seeing? What is this? I was laying down, but it's, it looked like I was up and they were just, they were looking at me waving, but it was, it was, it's hard to explain it, but I understand in a way, you know, with, the, with that open vision that a cloud of witnesses are always before you, rooting you on, cheering you on, cheering you on, rooting you on. And he said, therefore, since we have such great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside everything that will try and uh, hinder us, every sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. Mm. Run with 
run the race that is set before us. Now, verse two, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility from sinners against himself so that you will not grow weary in well doing. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So that you will not grow weary. I want to go back to, to verse 2. To, to chap, um, chapter 12 and verse 2. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who's my question to you? Who is the author? Who's the author? We start talking about the author, Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is the author and finisher, then who's who's your author? Who is the author? You can go into a store, see a book that an author had written. You go rip out pages of that book. Go and rip out pages in that book. You replace those pages with pages that you want in that book. And you go and take it to that author. When that author reads it, he might say, my name on this book, this book looked like me, but the substance of this book is I didn't write that. And what I'm here to tell you is you got to re redefine who's the author. God said something that was so profound in Genesis chapter one, chapter two and chapter three. When, when chapter three, when Adam and Eve fell. God asked them the question when, they, they, when we say, where are you at? And it got, instead of Adam telling God where he was, he told him why he was where he was. That woman gave me this apple and I ate it, the fruit, and I ate it and and. and we covered ourselves up with, with, with leaves. God's question to them was, who told you you were naked? See, God, that the author didn't author that. So what I'm saying to you, who is the author? If Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of your faith, then he's transcribed the story so powerful and beautiful for your life. He's transcribed a, a story so righteous and pure. And so intentional concerning your life. But you've been running your race based on someone else's story. You've been running your race, living your life. In the beginning, he said, the race that was set before you, run that. Endurance, the race that is set before you. There's a race that God has given you, but you're running your race in somebody else's lane because you refuse to let God author and be the author in your life. God has to be the author in your life. We have to surrender our right to be an author. The enemy have tried to author your life. The enemy have tried to author your life. And you allowed the enemy to take up the pen and you're walking out what the enemy has authored. But it's a change now. It's a change now. It's a change. It's awakening now. Who's the author? Who, who transcribed your life? Who's transcribed your life and, and called you by name? And who gave you the color eyes you have and the, and the color skin you have and the face you have. The beautiful you. The authentic you. Who authored you? That's the question you got to ask yourself. You've let people hang names on you and hang narratives on you. hang stories on you, hang, hang anything and everything they want to hang on you, and you've accepted it. But if a person name you, they own you. If I name you, I own you. I've had plenty of animals in my life. I love pities. I had a bunch of different pit bulls. Name, one name was Red, one name was Leia, one name was Bishop, one name was Luke. I haven't had a Yorkie, Chewy, who was raised with a bunch of pits. And I named every one of those dogs. And guess what? When I called them by name, the name I gave them, they came to me. Somebody done named you. Because they think they offered you. If, 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 now I named them, I control them, I tell them what to do. They become the animal that I want them to be. Why? Because I named them. What have you accepted as a name? The only one that has the power to name you is the one that authored you. 
I'm not talking about the name your mother gave you. Or you I'm talking about you accepting any other narrative, any other name with narratives connected to it. You let people connect narratives to you based on your cultural differences that bring division. Remember, if I name you, I own you. God said, who told you you was naked? Who told you you was black? What's black? Who was the first person to, to identify that and, and, and to say that that people grew black? Who, who were the first person to say they Indian? Or they're this or they're that. I'm talking about names, simple situations that pull us out of the glory of God. We are all of one people, of one race, the human race. And, and, and it's been divided because we've allowed different authors to come in and try and author what they were never qualified to author. And we just have accepted their, them being authors that they're able to name and to transcribe and to create narratives that you have to walk out. Who authored you? See, God wants the author's copy. There's an author's copy that that author keeps in his desk. And anytime somebody come with, with, a, with a copy of his book that is not the same, he pull out the author's copy and say, hold oh, up, these are where the changes are at. I'm telling you today, God has pulled out his author copy concerning you. And he's looking over your life and saying, nope, I didn't write that. 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 And until you, you, you release yourself from the names that other people have named you. Because God has authored your life to be revolutionary. God has authored your life in such a way that eyes have not seen, neither have ears heard, nor have entered into the hearts of men. The things that God has for you, the things that God is calling you to, God is the author and the finisher of your life. And he's given you endurance to run the race. If you're fatigued and if you're tired with running your race, guess what? God said, I didn't call you to run that race because the race I called you to run, I've given you the endurance to run that race, to run that race with victory. But you got to go back to the author. You got to go back to the author who authored you and allow him to show you the author's copy. 100%, 90% of what's happening in the world today is happening because people have allowed other people to author them, to author scenarios, to author narratives that God never signed off on. God didn't sign off on somebody else changing the script of your life. God didn't sign off on anybody else renaming you something. God didn't sign off on that. Brothers, sisters, God didn't sign off on that. And as soon as you try to step into the biggest, the biggest false authors are, are ourselves. We ourselves. Because we'll begin to get lost. Well, I don't know what I'm on the earth to be and I don't know who I am. Who the author? The reason we get, well, the reason we're walking confusion is because we've allowed other people to try and author us and we try to run our race in everyone else's lane, but we don't get back to the author's copy. And we begin to, to, to put on this and put on that and do this and do that. And, and before we know it, we're lost in someone else's world. Because you were never encouraged to think. Somebody always tried to think for you. Ain't that something? They're going to tell you how to think and what to think. And if you don't think like they think, then you're an outcast. If you don't, if you don't think what they think, then, then there's something wrong with you. You better run away from them. They're trying to offer something that they were never given the right to do. The author's copy. The author's copy. The author's copy. The author's copy. Therefore, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every weight, everything that encumbrance, every sin which so easily entangles, every weight. Guess what? When David went to the battle and, and Saul tried to give him his armor, that he had to lay aside that weighty stuff. Why? Because God didn't offer him to fight with that. 
God gave him some rocks and a sling. And he took that rock and a sling that God had authored into his life to defeat a giant. You've been trying to use Saul's armor to defeat the giants of your life. And you've lost every battle. Why? Because God didn't write that into the script. He didn't offer you to, to use that armor, to use Saul's sword. You defeat the giant the way God have authored you and given you the tools to do it with. But you're letting somebody else try and offer. See how Saul tried to come in and offer, offer the situation? Yeah, you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to defeat him with my armor. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. With all due respect, king, no. You got to give somebody the all due respect hand. With all due respect, no. Give them, give them the hand because you have been offered by God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I felt that one. You've been authored by God. God have authored you. He's offered you. And the more you look in the mirror, the more confused you get. If that's you, you got to get back to the author's copy. Strip away them nails. Strip away them five five inch eyelashes you put on your face. Strip away the wig. Strip away the weave. Strip away everything external and say and, and the Holy Spirit will take you by the hand and walk and, 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 and lead you into a place of rest and read your life story back to you and you know what God what, what, what the Holy Spirit shared with me when I say God years ago reveal to me like who I don't know me he said yeah Lord show me me he said it's going to take eternity to show me you because you have eternity on the inside of you. There's eternity on the inside of you. And it'll take eternity for me to reveal you to you. Why? Because you're an eternal being. Stop thinking that, 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 that it's you're some simple object that can be simply described and, and simply explained. No, you're an eternal being. God have made you as a complex being full of love, full of glory that has to be revealed throughout eternity. God will put an engine in you of glory. There's enough glory on the inside of you to last eternity. Just think about that. Because the author designed you. The author created you. I'm talking about the author's copy today. I'm talking about the author's copy today. The author had prescribed you and created you in his likeness and in his image. And he wants to know who told you that you naked. Somebody else changed the script. Somebody else have changed the dynamics of the script. So I'll never receive what somebody else tries to name or call me or, or put a label on me. I'll never, never receive it. As a kid, I never received it. Oh, he, he, he can't learn or he's going to be. Nope. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's not the office copy. Oh, he needs medication to calm down. Nope. That's not the author's copy. He has ADHD. No, that's not the author's copy. Oh, we got to get back to the author's copy. We got to get back to the author's copy. We've been bamboozled. We've been tricked. We've been led amok. We've been led astray. We got to get back to the author's copy, baby. We got to get back to the author's copy of what he transcribed, of what he's written concerning your life. Your last 10 years, you live your life in somebody else's lane. You calling yourself by what somebody else called you. They've authored you. You've let them change the pages. See, we look at history and everybody knows people have changed history and manipulated history for, to make themselves look better. We all know that. That, that ain't no shocker. Like in, in, in our own personal lives, you're going to write a story. If you, been, if you was hellacious to somebody, you ain't going to write you was hellacious. At least you ain't going to write all of the hellacious stuff you was doing. You might say you was bad to them, but you ain't going to put a... So we know that, that people have authored and have tried to change stuff. But man, the history of who you are resides on the inside of you. 
You depend on the Holy Spirit to reveal to you who you are and who God have created you to be. And he'll walk you through that. And that'll be an eternal relationship that you have with Holy Spirit. He wants to have an eternal relationship with you. An unbroken, unceasing fellowship where you walk hand in hand with Holy Spirit. When Jesus said he was giving you Holy Spirit, he never said he was taking him back. Ha! Hallelujah. But the Holy Spirit living in you is going to be upon you and it's going to operate through you. But you got to embrace the author's copy concerning your life. You got to reject every other copy. False blueprints. You bow knee only to the kingdom. The kingdom culture is what you only accept. See, when, when you embrace the author's copy, you won't accept any other culture. I don't care what it is and who it is. You won't be defined by the pigmentation of your skin. You won't, you won't allow, you won't submit to. You have to subjugate, subjugate yourself to that type mess, to that type craziness, to that type level of darkness. To be defined, let people define you based on the pigmentation of your skin or the lack thereof. Or based on the type of flag that you fly over your house. I fly the kingdom flag. My vote is for kingdom. Christ Jesus alone and no other. Everything else is subjugated to the throne of God and to the reality of the kingdom, the reality of heaven that God wants to get to the earth through me. God wants to tell your story to the world. But you got to put down the pen and let him be the author. You have to give people permission to author something in your life. You literally have to give people permission to author, author things in your life. You have to give them permission. Like, like you have to give them permission to author things in your life. Without your permission, they can't do it. But they get your permission, oh, they can author. They can, they, be, they can write. They can transcribe. They can transport. They can write and become authors concerning your life because you gave them permission. When you let people group you and determine your end and your beginning, the devil is a liar. Vehemently, violently reject, relentlessly reject anyone else. Claiming authorship of something they didn't create. Hallelujah. We were bought with the price. You were bought with the price. You were bought with the price. You were bought with the price. Stop letting other people claim rights to what they didn't author, what they didn't pay for. You were bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. You were bought with the price. Everybody puts so much weight. People want to be authors and give false words and all these false words and false things. The words are already here. It's spoken. You better get connected with the connector of Holy Spirit. Let him lead and guide you into all truth and reject everything. No matter how good it looks or good it sounds or how it makes you feel because you're not moving, you're not running this race. Based on what sounds good, tastes good, feel good, look good. That's not the race that we run. And you see, when you're running your race in the lane of the flesh, it's in that place where you begin to allow circumstance, situations of, of other people, past, present, and future, to author things in your life that you begin to walk out and to live. Glory to God. Glory to God. The author's copy. The author's copy is what you're after. Are you the author's copy? Are you the author's copy? And you've heard me say this 
Facebook and YouTube, you've heard me say it so many times. A seed has been authored by somebody. And that seed is going to produce what somebody put in that seed. So who put the first apple tree in the first seed? We all know God did that. We all know God did that. So if God put the first apple of God, then we know that God is of the apple trees and everything else that come out of it. Now, now let's take this. In the United States, there are companies that have authored, have, have scientifically engineered and genetic and, and, and generated seed that they now have the patent on, that they own. Wickedness. Ain't that some wickedness? So, and now farmers around our nation can no longer plant real seed. They have to plant the seed that's been engineered. And they, they can face lawsuits and even having their farms taken if they don't plant the seed that was engineered as opposed to the to the seed that God authored. Because there's no compatibility between the seed that God authored and the seed that they authored. Because if men start planting the seed that God authored, it'll overtake those engineered seeds because of pollination that takes place. Have you agreed to only sow an engineered seed? Walk out an engineered script. And so that seed is planted and that engineered seed can only walk out the engineered script that man have touched and done to it. Has man tried to socially engineer you? Are you the product of social engineering? Are you the product of social engineering? What a question. What a question. Are you the product of social engineering. Have we been socially engineered that somebody now has a patent on our life? A secret patent we don't know about. This is the wake up call. See, this, this, this word has went in and out and equipped and, and, and strengthened and encouraged and dug into foundation. And now prophetically speaking, there's social engineering where people have claimed rights. We got to shake off any and everything that tries to engineer an outcome and a narrative in our life other than the author's copy. The author's copy. There has to be a part two to this. Oh my goodness. The author's copy. We're going to be in the social engineer copies. Just like that seed that's, so, that's engineered that has to be planted. When you go into the grocery store and you eat grapes that are seedless, know that God never created a a seed that, that produce a seedless grape. Know that God never did that. Most of the vegetables that you see and you eat when you go into Walmart, they have no nutrient value because they were engineered. We got to get back to the author's copy. Oh, I feel that. Oh, Holy Spirit, is, he wants you to make room. Make room for the Holy Spirit. Make room for the Holy Spirit to come inside and die. Oh, give him his place. Give him his place. Give him his space. Father, we invite Holy Spirit in today. We invite Holy Spirit in today. We invite the Holy Ghost in today, Lord. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Mm. Now is reflection time. I want you to reflect. I want you to reflect, take a deep breath and just reflect on what you've heard. Mm. Shh. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm, just receive, just receive. Right now, Holy Spirit is undoing some things. Right now, Holy Spirit is undoing. He's undoing. He's undoing. I see the, the Holy Spirit with an eraser. Big eraser. He's on erasing off of the pages of your life. That which was not authored and transcribed by him. And as he erases underneath what somebody else wrote is the true identity of you the author's copy have never left the pages oh shit blood come alive and be Lord come alive and be Lord hallelujah his reality has to come alive in you the reality of heaven come alive in me hallelujah glory to God mm. hallelujah come alive come alive hallelujah come alive hallelujah come alive glory to God Come alive today. Come alive today. Come alive today. You're going to take your first breath. The breath of life. You're going to take your first breath today in walking out the author's copy. <sighs> mm. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 through 3. Meditate on that this week. I'm going to read it again. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every weight. Everything somebody's tried to hang on you, strip it off now. Strip it off now. Every weight of every word, every weight of every past circumstance and situation, every weight and every word of what you've held people hostage because of what they didn't do. That so easily beset us, every weight and sin, Weight and sin, which so easily entangles us. Any sin that you've been tang got tangled up in, rejected, rejected as a reality. Walk in the truth of the Lord. Walk in the truth of the Lord and allow his word to be the revealing fact in your life. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. The race that was set before you was never designed to have holes in front of in front of you. The race that was set before you was des never designed the way that the race that you've been running. You've been running your race in somebody else's lane. You a sprinter. You a hundred meter runner, and you, somebody done put hurdles in your lane. So it seemed like you're losing the race because you're running your race in somebody else's lane. Hallelujah. You're running your race in somebody else's lane. But now it's time to fix, to get the reset. Here it is, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. The author and perfecter. Why do we fix our eyes on the author? Why? Because he, he's the author. He's, he, he's authored it. And so we fix our eyes on the author because guess what? We reflect the expression of the author. We look at, we fix our eyes on the one who authored. And when we get our eyes off the one who authored us, that's when we go wrong. When Adam and Eve took their eyes off of the father, the author, they fell into the hands of a lie, another author. The finisher, author, and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat, has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you. This has been an awesome and blessed occasion of us spending time together and, and 
fellowshipping in the word. God has blessed this time that we've had together. I want you to remember, we're going to get into this again, the author's copy. You have to get and meditate on Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Oh my goodness. Go back over your, your Holy Spirit prayer, making sure that you understand those things that, that prayer is required. That prayer is required. And then Saturday motivation. Just know that Saturday motivation is, is a time of us to just pour into your life and, and motivate you and activate you to move forward. Yesterday was a was a was a different time because God required prayer. It just shifted the whole whole uh session shifted. Uh, and change the old environment of a change. So Saturdays, 7 a.m., we have Saturday morning motivation. And then you go to our workout with Hannah, Wednesday workout with Hannah. I'm excited to see how God is going to use this. This is Solution School of Fitness. Hannah is heading it up and, and bringing fitness to us by way of fitness alongside the Word of God. So she's sharing, sharing a 10 minute sermonette, just giving us some food and getting us, getting our bodies right, getting our bodies in shape so that we can be getting to run the race of endurance effectively without having to worry about aches and pains, hiccups, and, and hiccamashandas. Amen? So we have that. And then you already know about this. You're a part of it right now, and that's Sunday service. Every Sunday at, at 9 a.m. start time. And then our slogan, what, we, what we're rooted in, and that's love never fails. When you see that symbol, you understand and know that symbol is saying love never fails. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get you from point A to point B, taking one step after another. You can't run a mile skipping steps, but it's one step at a time. And so we're, we're confident that we are committed to leading you one step at a time forward. Step three, step four, step five, step. If you just took one step today and that was just rejecting any other authored lie. If you took one step today and, and finding the puzzle piece, if you took one step today <clears throat> and that light coming on in your heart and in your mind, then you won. You're victorious today. And we want to thank you for joining us. Um, go on the website. Go on our website. It's uh, solutionchurch.com. Go on that website. Just Look at some of the things that we have going on that we are going to be updating our website very soon and putting some more uh, updates on. We're going to be putting on our uh, our pregnancy, abortion, um, prevention hotline. And this hotline will be for people. You're pregnant. You don't know where to turn. You don't know what to do. There's going to be a hotline for you to call so that we can support you and pray for you and give you resources of information that will lead you to making the right choice. So we want to be a part of, 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 of your life, if you're listening, if you're tuning in. We want to continue to mentor, mentor you, um, to disciple you in the things of God. So leave um, something in the message box, leave something in the chat box, leave something sharing with us how this message has touched your life, how it has empowered you, how it has equipped you. And please put query, prayer requests in the chat. Please put prayer requests in the chat so that we can respond to those next week so that we and then share also the praise reports that come behind those prayer requests. I want to thank God for our brother down in Charlotte, North Carolina, Apostle Kevin Graham and the work that he's doing there. Um, he's just left... Um, he did a prophetic conference in Cleveland, Ohio, and the people of Cleveland, Ohio were so blessed by that, and they are, are um, excited about the next steps of what Apostle's going to do. He's going to be down in Atlanta next week. I want to thank God for um, the work that they're doing, the work that they're doing, great and awesome job putting on that show, doing the work. I want to thank God for the local bodies all around here in Columbus, the Rock Church, and what Pastor Ebb's doing, what, what Apostle Dave is doing um, in uh, West Virginia and, and building and birthing um, all that God have, have put in him to do. And I'm just excited for the people of God who walk and hold the kingdom standard and refuse to bow knee to anything else 
I want to thank you. I'm going to lift up and thank God for Pastor Isaiah Paul, my ordaining pastor, who, who, who when nobody else uh, saw pastor, preacher, prophet on the inside of me, that man of God, God spoke to him and said that I had a word and he called me to the forefront of the church. That was right when I had gotten, before I, either right after I had gotten drafted, but at any rate, it was such an amazing um, thing to, to be in that place and not know what God was going to say. But when I stood up, I began to prophesy um, to people in that, in the local body. And five hours later, I finished. And, and five hours seemed like one hour. But at that point, um, the man of God began to declare over my life and concerning what, what God was doing. And, and we look now and see that those things are manifesting. So thank you, Pastor um, Isaiah Paul in Alabama. Thank you for being obedient to God in a time when, you know, it wasn't, you know, you, you just don't let people... You know, I've never seen it in that fashion happen. That's how you know it was God. It's, he's never really just let anybody in this pulpit. But I'm saying all that to say there's a call on somebody's life right now. And I'm sharing all that to share that you're going to have many people that may sow into your life in one way or another. Um, but there is an assigned person that God have assigned. And when God places that assignment on somebody to identify somebody, a door holder in the spirit, a father in the faith, to identify the call that's on your life, that's precious. Like, and that's, you know, that's precious. I, I think back at that when I was a NFL player just getting drafted. Everybody saw NFL, but he didn't see that. He saw this is a man of God. So we're just excited. We're excited about what God is, is doing, what he's going to do. And um, we are posturing ourselves to receive of the Lord. I need you this week to revisit this word, to revisit the scripture, um, to revisit those things that, that God has spoke on today. Amen. I want to thank my mom, Shelly Gaskins. I want to thank my father, Samuel Gaskins. These are, are, are not just my mother and father, but they are pioneers in the faith. Amen. Who, who carry the banner. My mom is an ordained woman of God, ordained and established in her ministry. Um, we just thank them for always supporting and joining us and being with us in all that we do. So we thank you, mom, dad, and all of the family down there in Florida. We give shout outs to Ormond Beach, Daytona Beach, and, and all surrounding areas and, and the support that you've given and continue to give in ministry. We're going to give a shout out to Kansas State University, my brothers, um, who, who I went to war with at Kansas State and, and done great things. I want to give a shout out to Mario Smith down in, in um, Miami, who's doing a great work, who has a school down there that he has had and has continued to grow that school and grow um, as a businessman in, in such a way that, that he's going to be doing some great things. I hope to have him on soon and, and just excited. I want, to, I want to thank God for all of you joining again. Y'all have a blessed day. Glory to God.